Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around the Missoula area this morning and the next couple of days. So let's get into it. The weather, it rained yesterday. Uh, wait, no, it didn't rain yesterday. It rained the day before yesterday, which was Monday, which helped with the air quality. So currently, uh, we can expect some of that haze to be coming back later this week, some parts of today as well. Uh, it is going to be, it's currently 46 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 86. And then by Friday, your high is going to get to a low in the highs of the 70 degree temperatures. So we're gonna have those kind of temperatures, but of course by Saturday, maybe this weekend, we'll maybe see some clear skies, but it doesn't look like we're gonna have too much of smoke, haze, or anything like that. So River City Roots Festival starts this Friday. So if you guys are going out and about in the uh, downtown Missoula area, be aware that there's gonna be uh, traffic uh, uh, detours around the uh, Ryman, Main Street areas as well, so there's that. So let's let's take a look at the uh, the uh, the Department of uh, Environmental Quality. Um, here's a map of the air quality in the state of Montana. The um, yellow is moderate, which is unhealthy for very sensitive groups to the, some of the haze and smoke. Green is good, and if you look right here, uh, this particular dot right here. That's Missoula, so, and Missoula is doing good. So our uh, particulate matter in the air that usually comes from the smoke is pretty good. So let's talk about, um, so that's pretty much what's going on with the weather. Um, I got some news items I wanna talk about. Uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna go to state news and then I'm gonna go back to some local news. In the state, I have a, your local fire situation in the state of Montana. Um, if we take a look at the interactive map from Incineweb, Incineweb is your resource for everything that's happening in terms of fires across the United States. So if you take a look, you can see there's a lot of fires happening on here, but the biggest fire that we have so far is the Howe Ridge fire. And the Howe Ridge fire is at 9,672 acres, and this was updated just 12 minutes ago. So currently, let's, uh, if you actually click on that link, it'll bring up more information about that particular fire. Um, but here's a little background. On the evening of August 11th, uh, lightning ignited at the Howe Ridge, northwest of Lake McDonald Glacier National Park on Sunday, August 12th. Windy and dry conditions fueled the refuel to rapid expanse. Um, evacuation orders were issued for the North Lake McDonald Road, Lake McDonald Lodge areas, uh, Sprouge Creek and Avalanche Campgrounds, and the going to the Sun Road from the foot to Lake McDonald to Logan Pass. And Logan Pass, um, going to the Sun Road is usually one of those roads that are usually closed. Uh, it tends to be 11 months out of the year, depending on how dry it is. Um, so uh, it's it's very it's very uh, disappointing for people who like to go up there. And August is the peak month for going up to the Sun Road and Logan's Pass. So just so you guys know that the fire is still at, at any um, iteration is not necessarily contained. There's no um, information about containment. The Garden City Fire, which started July 20th by lightning, has not shown any growth in the last week and remains at 2,500 acres with a 50% containment. The Brownstone Fire, as of Monday, and that's uh, the fire that's uh, generally uh, located, if we take a look at the map once again, let me f try to find the Brownstone Fire. The Brownstone Fire is right here. Uh, it's not, it's about 2,000 acres currently. If we take a zoom in a little bit more, it's in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. And if you were seeing some of the smoke area in Great Falls and whatnot, this is the kind of general area where smoke is coming from. But from what I've seen a lot of here, um, it seems like it seems to be uh, centralized in the Northern um, areas of the United States. Um, uh, one of the things that they started doing for a lot of the hotshot crews and all that stuff to prep for the fire is that they had a uh, seasonally high um, dry conditions in the southern um, region of Canada, the border between Canada and Montana. So I want to end it right there. You can always go to Incineweb to find, figure out your up-to-date information about all of the fires that are happening in the in Montana and in the United States and beyond. Okay, so anyways, let's move on to some local news. The mayor of Missoula plans to put money from Redevelopment Agency to the general fund during during a special meeting. 
In a 4 to 1 vote, the Missoula Redevelopment Agency rearranged $2.73 million of property tax collected within the urban renewal district and will be reallocated through the city's general fund. Uh, so the money wants to be used for the city, county, and local schools. Um, this means that the city will have less tax increment financing that can be awarded to businesses in the Missoula area to help encourage businesses to move to Missoula. I mean, folks on MRA thinks this could be a recurring theme for years to come. In the past, few years, millions of dollars in development in Missoula has taken place within urban renewal districts, but Ellen Buchanan, director of MRA, said last week that she was shocked by the shortfall between what she and her, st uh, her staff anticipated in property ta tax revenue from the districts and what actually came in. Home appraisal uh, is the culprit behind certain sudden um, increases in taxes because uh, the, the, I guess it's the organization of realtors in Missoula. They do a assessment value of your homes every two years and we just came off of that right now. So if you had a house that was reassessed for a much uh, higher um, value, you can um, incur the costs related to a higher valued home. Because um, when you a lot of times when you uh, when you vote for uh, certain bonds or certain measures and there's a there's like a, always like a gap between like uh, lower income versus higher income and the, the people who may who whose homes are val whose property values at like two hundred fifty thousand dollar home or more um, has to pay more and people less than that pay less so it's kind of like uh, that's and that's one of the things that they were talking about in there as well in terms of how much money was generated through taxes. Th the tax revenue. All right. So, uh, of course, I'll talk a bit, little bit more about this because tax increment finances is the hot topic that was at the city council meeting on Monday, and I'll talk about that during your city council meeting. Let's move on to some national news. Um, as of Monday, uh, officials say 95-year-old former Nazi labor camp guard named uh, Jawi, uh, Jaki, Zakiv Palik, will, who lied about his wartime work when he immigrated to the United States back in 1957, will be deported back to Germany. Um, but after years of legal work, the U.S. finally proved his involvement during World War II in 2004. So it took protests many, many years for this person to finally be deported because no country would actually take him. And he would be, and he's considered the 68th um, Nazi to be deported back to d Germany in the United States history. Um, so he ba back in the day, he uh, immigrated to the U.S. in 1957 and through hard work of of a historian with the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum proved that he was among the Nazis who, who had knowledge of the Nazi final solution that killed over two million Jews. As a guard for the Traniki labor camp, he was, uh, he was around on November 3rd, 19, uh, 1943, when some 6,000 Jewish men, women, and children incarcerated at the camp were shot to death in one of the largest single massacres in the Holocaust. So as of right now, he is in a uh, assisted living home for, in the, for the elderly in uh, Germany right now. So. That's what's happening in your news today. So let's talk about some um, new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT. We got a bunch of uh, wonderful programs, a bunch of new things that I've noticed. Uh, we'll kick things off with a little tease from uh, Missoula Out and About. So the Bicycle Ambassador Program is an annual grant-funded program um, that runs from about May to October each year. Um, each year the city hires two Bicycle Ambassadors. Um, yeah, I would highly encourage you to apply. It's a really fun job for the summer, and you get to be outside a lot and talk to people about bikes. And the design of wild nature. This gradually led to many recognitions of the value of wilderness for spiritual experience and a traditional theology that was once at once edifying, transforming, and inspiring of a stream of programs and projects. This allowed for a modern connection to the ancient desert fathers and mothers and the early decades of Christian monasticism, fathers and mothers went into the wilderness, not because they disliked the people or the cities, but because they sought a stronger and more transforming experience of Jesus Christ and the heavenly realities. A person like me doesn't become what my parole officer once called a domestic terrorist overnight. Being a drug dealer and a criminal is a lurky family trade, but no more. My grandpa, my dad, numerous uncles spent most of their lives in prison for homicides, and the list goes on and on and on. I come from a line of people whose main purpose in life is to hurt others and inflict as much pain as they can. 
That's how we thought it was to be a man. But it's ending with me. I told my 14-year-old son just the other day, as I gave his mother money to pay bills, this is what a real man does. That showed major change in myself. If you ever paid attention to the trip, Sacagawea and, and Charbonneau were almost always with Clark. Clark seemed to be able to tolerate Charbonneau. Lewis didn't want anything to do with him. In fact, Lewis is the one that says he's a man of no particular merit. So up the river they go. They leave Fort Mandan. They're crossing the High Line, northern Montana here, and no ponies and no people. Charlie Russell, I think he says he was discovering Lewis and Clark is the name of this, this, uh, this mural, but um, they didn't see anybody. They saw signs, they saw old abandoned villages, but they could not find any ponies or any people. I bought one of those um, cards, those Visa gift cards that you can get. That's what I use for a lot of my online shopping. I figured that way if I get compromised, I can only lose the amount that I already put into that card. It's not some big credit limit. And I was trying to go in and check my balance in that little card that I bought at CVS or wherever it was. And I kept getting a funny sight that didn't look like the one I'd gotten before I was putting the site in, but I might have been typing it just one letter off. And it was not a secure site, but it looked, had I not been aware, it looked a lot like the site that I had gone to previously to check that balance. Well, if I had put my card number in there and my password, my $14.50 really <laughs> gone out the window. So it's just a really good lesson that I learned. This is true. In 1980, I was on a thinning crew up Highway 12 with my friend Joe. Now, uh, I enjoyed cutting down trees. The Forest Service had taught me how to cut down trees, and I thought I was pretty good at it. Also on the thinning crew was uh, Joe's friend, Jerry. And Jerry owned a beautiful, handmade cedar canoe. Now, if you continue up Highway 12, you'll go over Lolo Pass and down into Idaho, and you'll come to the Locksaw River. And Highway 12 follows the Locksaw River for about 80 miles, and it's some rough country. As a matter of fact, it almost ended the Lewis and Clark expedition. Well, there was an article in the Missoulian, uh last weekend. It was an editorial about tax increment finances, and a lot of people rolled with it and went to the city themselves on Monday night city council meeting to say uh, to uh, express their concerns about a city's use of TIF funding. So, this uh, episode of city council is all about TIFs. So let's ki let's get on it. <laughs> Uh, while, of course, Last Beach Cub comic was about some of the drug use and in the, some of the uh, local parks and certain individuals who uh, have made Missoula a tough place to live for some of the folks who enjoy, this time public comment thinks that the city is taxing people out of Missoula. So during public comment, a man named Jerry came before the uh, council to reflect on the upcoming budget. That you should have be able to spend to put more policemen on the force, more firemen, and do more road work. My biggest example is downtown. You get that hotel built and all that housing down there, and you don't think that, they're, that your services are going to come back and ask for more personnel to keep them under control. And your only option is to be able to go to all of us and say, Hey, Mr. Taxpayer, you got to pay more taxes because we need your money. We can't take it from them. We need your money to go out and hire more policemen. So that's the problem, and only you can solve it. You can't come to us and ask, well, how can we control the budget and what things do you want to cut? That is your job. And that's what you were hired to do. And All right, so that was Jerry. Um, I didn't get his full name. Um, um, he had a little mic trouble. Um, here is another person, uh, Renee Mitchell, shares what she thinks about tax increment financing. The TIF districts are out of control. 
when I was on council, they wanted to blight the the hip strip. Well, I guess if we keep blighting these areas uh, at the rate we're going, I guess we can call the whole town blighted. Well, it, it very well could come to that eventually when you keep taxing us so much we can't even keep keep our lawns and our and our properties kept up. Just the the maintenance. It's terrible what you're doing. So another w issue I have, roads. My road on Larkspur had a sewer put in. I've been on that street for 20 years. The sewer came down when it was extended, came down before that. So everyone's got a little uh, patch of stuff dug up from more than 20 years ago, and we've had a few patches for holes. The road needs help. I pay my taxes, and we're, you know, I'm paying for a fancy bridge across Reserve Street. I'm paying for a, a nice park. Uh, paying for a lot of fun stuff for the city. But the road needs some help, and so does the road on Benton, just west of the fairgrounds that goes up to 93 there. That is in terrible shape. That is All right, so that's a little bit of that. I have one more uh, public comment. Um, there's, there's, um, and this was the theme. I'm just kind of giving you kind of a scope of what uh, the city council meeting was kind of all about. Um, Von Dean Chepetsky talks about city council, uh, um, Jesse Ramos, um, and um, she's in support of Jesse Ramos, is also concerned about TIF funds. I think it is so interesting that the youngest member of the city council seems to be the only one that understands what it means to live within your means. And those of you who don't understand that should maybe have a conversation with Jesse because it is becoming impossible for people to live in Missoula. And so before you go ahead and hit us with another 3.85% tax, I would hope that you would all sit down and talk about what it means to have a, not have an a income problem, but you have a spending problem, just as Jesse says. There ought to be a time, and excuse me if I've never seen it, and I've lived in Missoula now for 20 years, I've never seen a time when the city council has actually sat down and talked about how to reduce expenses. And so instead of taxing the citizens again 3.85%, why don't you sit down and talk to all the department managers and ask them how they could cut their budgets? All I'm right, so that was uh, um, Von Dean. Um, Usually, um, public comments, um, city council doesn't directly respond until the end of the meeting when they have comments from the city council members. So um, I skipped ahead to the end of the meeting, and John DeBari talks about TIFs and the importance of having tax in increment financing districts. So uh, I'm not quite sure what the point of the editorial was. Um, if the part of it was to insinuate that tax increment financing wasn't working, then I would implore them to go back and look at the numbers because the information that's coming from the Department of Revenue suggests that it's working quite well in its intended target to do redevelopment within those areas of the community. And so um, I just thought I wanted to share that. Uh, the other thing was that a number of people this, uh, this evening came and spoke a lot about the fact that their taxes were going up but I didn't hear any one of them once speak about the level of appreciation of the value of their home, which um, I think uh, when you look at taxes, that's uh, a, when people pay those taxes, it's a benefit to the community, but that appreciation accrues specifically to the individual homeowner, and it's a shared benefit when we pay taxes to this community. Everyone benefits from that investment, and the result is is that individual property owners uh, realize an appreciation in their home values, and that's a good relationship to have. All right, so that was John DeBari. Um, we're going to hop on over to Jesse Ramos, who has uh, shown a lot of uh, concern in terms of city spending, and here's Jesse Ramos. Uh, there's very little oversight in MRA. Um, again, it's a non-elected board that makes huge amounts of spending decisions. They're appointed. And <clears throat> 
Nobody here is, um, I guess, slamming uh, the idea of TIF, but what they are doing is trying to, to say that it's been tremendously abused uh, over the past few years, decade even. Um, and these districts have been extended out. Districts, um, they, they've been taken full advantage of. These districts are supposed to last about 15 years, and every time we get close to expiring a district, we extend out the longevity of the district. And why do we do that? Eh, is it because that we didn't... Um, is it because more or less uh, we didn't see the growth that we wanted, or is it because we wanted more control of that money? Did we want um, an unelected board to be able to, that has no accountability to the voters, be able to um, more or less uh, just buy a walking bridge or, or help give handouts to corporations because there's no election to hold them accountable? Um, so I think that's the major concern with TIF is, is not the idea of it. It's the abuse of it. And All right. So that was Jesse Ramos from uh, his perspective of TIF funding. Um, Let's, um, I'm going to end it with Heidi West talks about living in Missoula on a fixed income. There's a lot of government uh, in the form of parks and trails um, in our lives. And when I moved to Missoula, um, I was a young mom, a stay-at-home mom. My husband worked for, uh, was in AmeriCorps Vista, so we made about $800 a month. Um, and the fact that we have parks and trails and all of these things um, that are accessible to everyone um, makes Missoula a great place to live, even if you're on a limited income, especially if you're on a limited income. Um, and as far as raising private funds for things like parks and libraries. Um, I think part of what's important um, is that through government um, we can assure a certain level of equity um, in all neighborhoods. And that being said, you know, a lot of parts of Missoula are underparked and they tend to be low-income neighborhoods, but if we were to rely you know, solely on the private sector, sector to develop uh, and fund those things, I I would assume that people would want to invest in their own neighborhoods. And All right, so that was uh, Heidi West, and that does it for all my quotes from city council. There was a lot of uh, back and forth. A lot of the city council members are uh, all for uh, improving um, Missoula in general, um, using TIF funds as long as they work. Um, like I said, you know, Missoula is a growing city. Um, and a lot of times it's like, do we want to stop growing? Do we want to invest in the city of Missoula, or do we, are we good enough the way it is? That's that's what uh, that's kind of like. This seems to be the debate going on here. But then again, there's always that uh, idea like there always seems to be an ongoing theme where there's a lot of things being made, but then there's not a lot a lot of things being done to put people into those places that are being made. So that's just something I kind of want to um, leave you guys with for my city council report. Um, if you guys are interested in watching the whole meeting, I just give you a little excerpt on what I've seen in the meeting. If you guys want to watch the whole meeting and kind of uh, come up with your own opinions based on what has been said and what's been discussed, um, you can go to the City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It talks about upcoming meeting, agenda items, and more. You can uh, go on to any of the links on your government to find all your city council meetings right here. All you got to do is go under the city council under your government and it brings you to that wonderful page that allows you to see and interact with all the videos that happen there. And they do it live too. It's live on the Sire, uh, which is uh, the power that, I guess it's the it's powered by Sire. So you guys can check that out. But of course, if you can't watch it there, you can always watch it on MCAT, channel 190. Um, we, it's always on uh, reruns. And if you missed the first meeting, you can watch it over and over again. Um, the meeting is at about an hour and 50 minutes long from Monday. So that pretty much does it for that. I do not have a dub and stuff. I have a little bit something special for you guys uh, from the north side, Missoula. What you got there, Scott? Got a basketball. It's good. Coats. Ooh, feel it. It's firm, but it's not firm at all. Bye. Bye. You know what's I think Azraz behind the scenes was actually probably my favorite one. Probably really? because probably because I didn't edit it. He did, I, edited I, I didn't it. film it. I didn't edit it. I only edited he it slightly. It, and then he just like up and quit. <laughs> and then you finished it, right, Scott? Oh, yeah. But if you ever just want to like record stuff, I'd be happy to edit it. Like just random stuff just to throw at me. 
to test my editing prowess. So, what's happening tonight, boys? We are going to be uh, helping out for the third man. Yeah. It's, I'm uh, the first, you're the second, and you're the third. So if you look at the screen right there, they could be projecting a movie onto that screen. They'd be utilizing those two speakers right there to be showing the movie The Third Man, which I've never heard of. That's gonna be a long time to come in on that house. And I guess we're all set up. Guys can like make up for it. So here we are at the beautiful Whittier School, known also as the Head Start School at 1001 Warden Street. And um, we're getting set up for the Missoula Outdoor Cinema. This is probably in its 15th year or so, and it's a project of the North Missoula Community Development Corporation. The point of the outdoor cinema is to let the neighborhood get together on occasion. A lot of times people find like there's no way to find out who their neighbors are unless they go to the same mall or the same church and everyone shops online. And no one believes in God anymore. So they have the outdoor <laughs> cinema and uh, it's a great way uh, for people in the north side neighborhood to meet with their west side friends or people in town to see some really exciting cinema. Tonight it's almost free. They ask a five dollar donation if you have it, ten for the whole fam. Damn it. So that's what MCAT's doing tonight to set up for Missoula Outdoor Cinema. Pretty neato. Okay then. The north side is the better of the sides. Yeah, because we get we get the hills. Notice there's hardly a south side. And there's hardly the south side, side does not exist. Everything south of the tracks does not exist. Yeah. Whack. <laughs> All right. Well, probably make stuff and probably be back. Wait, here's the transition. Yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, there was a pigskin. Super cinematic shot. Oh. My aim is as good as my self direction in life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, buddy. It's gonna hit the camera. I'm talking to Josh Cook. Bro. Me and him are gonna go on a date, bruh. Oh, good. Ah. Yeah! yeah. Mr. <laughs> so Austin, you doing with the mon moolah? I am the money man. Yeah. See this money? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. horn. This is my jam. That's totally how they danced in the, uh, the 60s. What Scott, your pit. How's it like working the popcorn stand? Make sure you get a high angle. What we can do about that? Well, I think it was a little embarrassing for uh, yeah. Mary, but uh, two guys distracted her and stole um, the cash box. They are on the north end of the yeah, entrance. That's, that's so they were thought to have. Um, I've uh, taken away eighty-five dollars um, thereabouts. Well, okay. Well, if they ever, if they're ever internet people, this, it would be nice to have it back. Yeah, that's right. A cry and shame. After all, um, the NMCDC is a nonprofit, and they're really just trying to help people. So that was selfish. And Austin's gonna, gonna. I got four bags of popcorn still. Anybody out there wants a popcorn? <laughs> Wants popcorn. Hey, hey. And if an officer put like comes by, it's like, sir, would you like some popcorn? <laughs> and so here we have the last parts of it. Are right, going inside this dark shed right here. Kind of letting up. Um, oh, I have one of those. I have one of those cameras. I like these exact no same cameras. And there's Graham, Scott, not you know the what? good Graham, you know the bad one. <laughs> evil. I prefer evil <laughs> Graham. Here, I expect you to invite me back, offer me a job, take your own At death. MCAT? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take your own death. <laughs> and then I'll murder you in the sewers. <laughs> Sound good? You've been watching too many movies. I got my own, but I'm not going to eat it. Ha ha ha!
<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. And that was uh, behind the scenes, uh, edited by our very own Graham Martin. Um, we I will have part two next Wednesday for you guys. So let's kick things into another gear or something. All right, we. It, it, let's, talk, let's talk about some events. Yeah, we're going to talk about some events that are happening in the uh, city of Missoula. Um, we're kicking off for some Wednesday stuff. This is basically the last full week that kids can enjoy their summer. Uh, school basically starts next uh, Thursday around. That's what some of the high school kids uh, told me. Um, uh, kids bounce and play in Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. They uh, provide Missoula County and the surrounding areas with the, uh, its first state-of-the-art indoor sports field. They have inflated a park consisting of large inflatables such as playgrounds, obstacle courses, slides, and bounce houses. Um, it's open to the public from 9 to 12, and Monday through Friday, the flat fee of $7 per child. Uh, circus show, gymnastics camp, they're still doing camps at the Roots Acro Sports Center. You can check them out. Um, you can go on their website. Um, and these are usually geared for kids 3 to 12 years of age. Family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics is for kids f uh, who are walking to 11 years of age, and that is at Mismo starting at 9.30 a.m., and they usually do this um, every single uh, morning during the weekday. Uh, Storytime in Frenchtown um, is uh, being sponsored by the Missoula Public Library. They host it in Frenchtown, and the kids um, get to learn um, some reading, get involved with books, and it's a good... Um, branch of Missoula Public Library, including um, Tiny Tales is going to be out in Power Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank, starting at 1030 this morning. But they usually uh, have them at the Missoula Public Library. Wednesdays, they tend to have them at various locations. Of course, it is the second to last Out to Lunch today, starting at 11. Um, the band that's going to be playing is uh, Cello Mafia and Young Artists. Multiple age, multiple levels, student cello ensemble will be playing for your enjoyment, starting uh, around 11 at Karis Park. Uh, Money Penny will be playing next week for wrapping up your uh, out to lunch uh, festivities with Money Penny and they're a blues rock band. Uh, Spectrum is doing chemistry at 2 a.m. I mean, well, 2 a.m. At 11, when they open, Spectrum Discovery Center is a place to learn about science with hands-on engaged learning. Um, th their activity in the makerspace is to build a robot. So starting at 2 p.m. from 2 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon, you guys can make some robots with your kids. And if the kid is under three, they get in free. Uh, Tia's Farmer's Market. So if you know Tia's Bistro, you know Empanada. Empanadas? I don't know. It's um, it's the place next to, like across from... Um, um, I want to say Imagination Brewing Company, but Tia's is doing their own little farmer's market. Tia, I don't know why I said little, but it's a farmer's market starting at 5 p.m. tonight. Uh, Riders Anonymous, Missoula Public Library, is hosting the last two events for your Wednesday night, and that's uh, receive construction criticism on your writing and provide feedback for others in a supportive environment. But it's also Riders Anonymous, so it's a good way to... Uh, Show your, figure out what your writing skills are. Um, Stephen King did it all the time. He always he wrote a lot of books underneath an, underneath a different pen name because he didn't want his critics to think his books were good based on his name alone. Carvey demonstration in the makerspace. Um, so if you're not interested in writing, you can do some. Um, ornament making, sign making, and other cool things during the workshop that features a demonstration of Carvey, a desperate carving machine that can carve designs and text into various materials. Space is limited to six participants. The makerspace is a small area, but you guys can sign up by going to the Missoula Public Library dot org. All right, so that's pretty much it for that day. Um, I do have a art clip for you guys, and this is from the, I believe this is the Missoula Art Museum, yes. And this is, uh, they'll be ending this tomorrow. So this will be the last chance to check out some of the art. But this is only a tease uh, made by our very own Rick Phillips, but you guys got to go check it out at the Missoula Art Museum. Free admission, free expression. I'll be right back with your Thursday events right after this. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Thursday events that are happening inside the Missou city of Missoula. Youth Baseball Clinic is happening at Westside Little League. Um, Ari Roddick uh, for a day camp that focuses on baseball, athletic development, and fun. Coach Ari is a former professional baseball player with a fan San Francisco Giant organization from 2008 to 2013 and current University of Montana doctor, a physical therapy student who is focusing on pediatrics and sports performance. So why not? It's a youth baseball clinic starting at 8 a.m. Westside Little League, and it's appropriate for all skill levels, and half of all proceeds support Westside Little League. Um, Hands-on Science, Light and Optics is happening at uh, Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, also, U Ubuntu, Missoula Public Library, you want to learn what Ubuntu is? So it's the open space Linux-based operating system. So hey, if you don't want to be a Mac person, you don't you you hate PC people? Hey, why not try Linux? Linux-based operating system that offers users host of free software tools and customization of their user experiences. So basically, uh, um, PCs you can customize. Yes, um, maybe a couple of vanity type customizations, but with uh, a Linux system, you basically can um, alter a lot of details. Imagine you get a tank, and they give you instructions for that tank. And if you need help with that, they give you even more information <laughs> about how to run a tank. That's what Linux is. All right, so that's happening from 12 to 1 p.m. in the computer classroom. It's Ubuntu, and you can check it out. I'm, I'm pretty sure I butchered it. I, I, I probably shouldn't have an accent behind it, but there you go. It's happening in the Public Library starting at 12 tomorrow. Hungry Tarantula Game, Missoula, Public, uh, Missoula Insectarium, uh, is the day where they learn about how to hunt prey like a tarantula. They'll be learning all about th these sit and wait predators and how they sense the world around them while we play an interactive game, and which is great for all ages. And they also have a predator feeding at 3.30 p.m. Um, also at 3.30 p.m. on the Michigan Public Library, it's Lego Club. From 3.30 to 5 p.m., the Dragon Log in the children's area. Every Thursday from 3.30 to 5 p.m., the Lego Club. Lego and Diplo pieces provided. All you need to bring is your imagination. Kids under 12 need to be accompanied by an adult because they might swallow the Lego pieces. I don't know. I don't know, kids. I don't know your kids. Maybe your kids are smart. Um, Tom Catmull, DraftWorks Brewing Company. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Tom Catmull. Um, he is the father of our employee, Jack Catmull, here. And he uh, he's going to be playing DraftWorks Brewing Company. He's a great musician. You should check him out. And he starts at 5 p.m. at DraftWorks. Also happening around uh, the same time, 5.30 p.m., downtown tonight is happening at Karis Park. Uh, it's every Thursday night until the end of August. So I believe this is the, also the second to the last downtown tonight. And it's Left on 10th, which is a funk rock band. And that's going to be happening. Um, it's basically exactly like the farmer's market. They have food vendors. It's free to attend, but you have to pay to eat, uh, pay to drink, and all that stuff with the uh, uh, concessions and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's happening from 5.30 to 8.30 um, this Thursday. And we're rounding up and we're ending up all the uh, outdoor Karis Park activities by the end of this month. So this is the second to last week to check it out. I'm assuming a bunch of college kids who are coming into the city of Missoula would be interested in checking out some of the Missoula stuff. Come on, freshmen. Get out of your dorms for at least a day. And th that would be the perfect day. Bingo. Hey. Why not do bingo? You know, you're never too uh, young to be old, or you're never too old to be young. The Missoula Senior Center, join for bingo at the Missoula Senior Senior Center. It's $18 for a dozen games. You can win some money, have some fun with us, and help support the Senior Center, the Missoula Senior Center, host of the best dance floor in the city of Missoula. So that about does it for all those events that are happening during the day. Um, there's always a couple bands that usually play in the late night. Um, they have open mics at uh, Green Al Alternative Dispensary. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a community forum at City Council Chambers. Uh, Wave and Circuit presents bases covered at Wave and Circuit. Bigfoot will be, p will be uh, featured at Painting with a Twist. Um, Missoula Meet Kalia at Noodle Express, I guess they're doing some um, food exhibitions there. Um, rocking karaoke at the Dark Horse. Um, those are s some of your Thursday events as well. But I do have one more art clip for you guys. I do have a couple MCAT announcement I'm going to make right after this. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. I want to thank once again Rick Phillips uh, for providing those wonderful art clips. He goes around to the art museums around town and captures a little glimpse of art that comes through the city of Missoula. A lot of art that you may never see ever again. So it's a nice little uh, service that he does for the Missoula community. So if you guys are interested in finding out about those videos and more, you can go on to the city, I mean the uh, MCAT's website at MCAT.org, Missoula's community media resource here to provide you all the needs and uh, accessibilities to create your own media works of art, whether that be documentary, filmmaking, radio program. We have all sorts of different fun little toys that you guys can play with, um, all in the um, all in the goal of making a video program. And be aware that the only consensus that MCAT ever wants from you is that anything that you use our cameras with, that we have access to that video to run on our channel. That's a fair stipulation. You use our cameras, you make equipment, and you do the stuff. And we get to show it, but we don't own it. I mean, we are First Amendment stations, first and foremost. People can come on these, um, come on um, MCAT and be like, I'm whatever, and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to say too much because I am a paid staff member at MCAT, so I'm just trying to give you information that you guys can use to help get a, f uh, a stepping stone into television media or YouTube or whatever. I mean, whatever you need, we'll, we can help you in terms of video media. All right, that being said, orientation is happening tonight at 5.30 p.m. every single Wednesday night. MCAT holds an orientation. You can call ahead or you can just show up here at 500 North Higgins, Suite 105. You can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can email us mcat at mcat.org if you don't like t chatting on the phone. Um, and you can learn more information about MCAT. Everything that you need to know is go is at mcat.org. Hey, if you're interested in finding about Wake Up Missoula, you can Google me. Or you can go to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice, and I'm too cheap to buy the licensing for Wake Up Missoula for some reason. Um, find me on YouTube. Find me on Facebook. And uh, if you look hard enough, you might find me on Twitter. It's all sorts of wonderful ways to get involved and find out more. I'm always looking to interview some people in the Missoula community about their upcoming events, causes, and rallies, and more. So if you're interested in doing that, you can call us at our number at 542-6228. Um, for MCAT, I'm Scott Ramp. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I have a, um, I have a lot more to talk about this Friday, so be warned. Uh, I'll be live again Friday, 9 a.m. to about 10 a.m., um, so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ranf. Bye, guys.